Hello, and immediately after the last video, I'm going to try, for n equals 39, to um, answer a question that's kind of been asked on a forum recently, um, which is about whether or not you can use MVVM cross bindings on a non MVVM cross like um, project, on a non MVVM cross view model in particular. So this is going to be n equals 39, and it's new territory, but uh, I think it's basically the same as it was for Droid, so it should be okay. So um, I'm going to set up a new project called Crosslight Touch. It's going to be N39, and it's going to go off and build an iPhone project. And then what I'm going to pull in as um, new get packages, oops, when it's finished talking to the build server, is I'm not going to pull in the normal MVVM cross packages. I'm going to get a local save myself. Instead, I'm just going to pull in cross core. And what that'll pull in is just kind of the binding level stuff for iOS. So, you know, we haven't got any um, um, NVVM cross-level assemblies here. We've just got binding in there and localization. So none of our NVX um, view models and things are going to be present. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder um, for framework, because it's kind of the way I set it up before for Droid. And in that folder, I'm going to add a class, which is going to be called Mini Setup. And in Mini Setup, what I want to do is I just want to initialize the very most basic bits of um, of, of the framework that I, I can. So I'm going to make this a singleton, just so I can reference it if I need to. Instance... Uh, Instance is going to be a new mini setup. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a public void ensure initialized. Sure, init, I think I'm a bit tongue tied. Um, and I'm not sure what I need to pass into that at the moment, so I'll see how it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly as I did when, if you, if you watch the droid one, which is like n equals 30 or something. Um, what when you know we were setting up a simple thing, what I did was I, I looked at creating the IOC container as the main you know point of of test, and I'm going to do the same thing again here. So I'm going to get a simple IOC container, and what have I typed wrong? I think it's IOC. That's ah, the capital V, and I'll pull that in. And if there's already an instance, then I'm going to assume that we're initialized. Oops. So if that is not null, then return. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do IOC, oops, IOC equals new, sorry, equals the MVX simple IOC container dot initialize. So this is just setting up our um, IOC that, you know, um, that all of the, the binding, etc. is expecting something that matches this profile. You can use a different IOC container if you want to, but this is just a simple one to use. Um, and then once I've done that, I can set up the bindings. So I'm going to do a var builder, and this is going to be a new MVX touch binding builder. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure what that requires as its parameters. It doesn't look like it requires much, so hopefully that'll be all right. And um, what I'll do is builder dot do registration, and that should set up um, what is happening. Um, I don't know if I need anything else in terms of views or things at the moment. I might might need something. We'll, we'll see if that happens. Um, but that should be the bare minimum setup to try and get binding running. So that's it. And what I'll do is I will call that initialize from app delegate. Let's do it. Mini setup dot instance dot ensure init. So that's going to be called before anything else is in finished launching. And then what I've got here is a my view controller that I'm going to try and take advantage of. So to do this, let's let's pretend we've already got a view model. So let's add one. View models. And this first view model is going to be called a you know foreign view model. Because it's just come in. I'll just call it my view model or something. Yeah. That will be understandable to people. And all we need to do to make it a view model is to have, you know, I notify property changed in there. So let's do that. 
I notify property changed. Let's implement I notify property changed. Let resharper do its stuff because we've got you know nice things for that. Um, so that's our view model, and then what we should be able to do, I'm just going to call this raise property change so that it'll get picked up easier. Um, what we should be able to do is a you know a kind of standard thing. So we'll do a string uh, first name and a string second name. One moment. So we should, sorry, go, uh, knock on the door. Um, we should be able to do a second one, which is going to be a string second name um, and this format of bindings doesn't need anything else because we're using the C sharp 5 call a member name okay sorry disturbances in the background so we're using the C sharp 5 to, to make raise property change work so this should be you know our view model and I'll just initialize it with something you know Fred and blob so um blocks so you know this is a standard notify property change nothing to do with you know mvvm cross it's just a a standard it could be any library um that uses uh i notify property change so now in our view controller let's just give ourselves a view model so what i'm going to do is i'm going to give myself a view model here um which is going to be a um Let's just see if I can just do this using an I. Right, so what I, I want to do now is I want to set up bindings. So to set up bindings, I do need to have a uh, binding context. Um, and to do that, um, I'm going to have to add a, a few little things in the background. Um, but it shouldn't be too bad. I just need to have a data context, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a private uh, MVX data context uh, the, let me just uh, one second so what it should be is I got it wrong is it an IMVX data context and ah, oh, it's a binding context sorry so it's a binding context that I need um, and that binding context should have been public because it's, it's going to get used um, by the, the system so we're going to do binding context here, um, and that's going to be getting set. So this is going to be the thing that actually stores our bindings. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to add the kind of standard things that we use for this, um, which is if you look at like there's a class like NVX View or NVX View Controller or any of those, they've all got the same kind of boilerplate code in there. So there's an override for dispose we use, which is if disposing then we do binding context uh, dot clear all bindings that's all we do in there and disposing um, and then we give ourselves a data context and what we do in our data context is we give ourselves um, we just use the binding context for this. so binding context dot uh, data context So that sets up our data context nicely, um, and that data context is of course our view model. You know, if you've used visual, if you use Windows bindings, then you're quite used to it. And so what we're going to do here is going to set the by data context to be a new. Um, and it's going to be a view model. So my view model. You know, how you get that view model is up to your app. How you do navigations up to your app, and probably an iNavigation service or something, because you're using existing view models. But basically, you should just be able to use it like that. Um, and before that, we should do something like, um, we should be able to get hold of the binding context. So how do we create a binding context? Um, we do that by creating it. Um, and in order to do that, it's just an extension method and it comes in by declaring ourselves bindable. Right, so those are the steps. We pull in that. Hopefully, that has pulled in a create binding context. That now works, um, and we've now got a data context. So, in theory, unless I've missed some steps, which is possible, 
Then at this stage we should, um, let's also change our view model. It'd be nice to have had a command in here. So what we'll do is an imdx command. Um, sorry, just an, uh, yeah, just use an i command because obviously you're not using um, mvvm cross. And the i command what we'll do is call switch command. And um, what we'll do in here is we'll get return new. Um, obviously you're gonna have to write your own command class as well. If you're not using mvvm cross, then you can't use mvx command. So we'll just create our own class relay command is a pretty common name for it. Um, and this relay command, I'll just put an action in there. So let's do these properties. Oops, didn't need to go to that. Implement the members. Uh, can execute, it's going to return true because we don't have much time. Uh, execute is going to just execute an action. So let's just have a private member called action and execute it. And can execute changed is never going to be used. So that's good. So all we need to do is to have a here. A private action underscore action and we'll initialize that in a constructor so hopefully there so there's a you know basic relay command that we can use um, and we're going to use that here in the switch command to new relay command and we'll just in here do uh, brackets bar temp equals second name Second name equals first name. First name equals temp. So we're just switching those things around. So it's a, you know, a dummy relay command. So um, what you've got here is hopefully you've got like a very simple view controller set up. Um, and we can now do some binding in here. So I'm just going to get rid of this touch up inside. Because we don't really want that coming through. Um, I'll leave everything else there. And we've got the view at that. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text field. Text first equals new UI text field. Um, and I'll put this somewhere on the page. Um, 10, 50, 300, 40. Add text first. Okay, this is standard iOS, there's nothing exciting in here. And then text second is going to be this. And we'll put it at 90. Um, and with that done, I believe we should be able to start actually putting some bindings together. So let's have a go. So var set equals, and what we'll do is this dot uh, create binding set. And this is going to be from my view controller to my view model. Set.bind. And we're going to bind text first to our view model's first name. We're going to bind text second to our view model's second name and we're going to bind buttons touch up inside its default property to uh, and this is going to go to the switch command um, and then what we'll do is dot set dot apply would have been nice as well to have had like another text box here maybe call this label And this is going to be a new UI label. Um, and this will go at 10, 130 uh, in that place. And what we'll do is we'll do set.bind. And the label will just have a go. I don't know if it's going to work at describing this as um, first name plus second name. Let's see if that works. That may be a step too far. So what we'll what we'll do is just try and push this together um, and see if it builds. OK, 
Okay. Well, it built. Let's see if we can put it onto iPhone Simulator and see whether or not we can run it. As I say, this isn't something I've prepared, so it be interesting to see how it works. So we start the build off, look at VNC and see if it comes through. Sorry about fan noise on this recording, it's just a thing. So you can see we do have some binding here because we've got Fred and we've got blocks. And if I start doing these, then you can see that binding comes through. Doing F, you can see there. And if I hit click me, it does the switch. So that is a very quick introduction into the fact that you can use you know, very quickly, the um, binding code within MBVM Cross without using any view models or any of the big setup. So none of our setup for um, for things like the the value converters and stuff like that. You'll have to work that out yourselves. But you can do that straightforwardly. And this is a relay command which has nothing to do with MBVM Cross. And this is a view model that has nothing to do with MBVM Cross. Um, you can wire this up. You can. You have to use something that's compatible with our IOC to wire up our binding but then after that you can use your own inversion and control you can use tiny IOC which is brilliant you can use your own messengers don't mind um, but you know this code here is all you should really need along with a little bit of adjustment on the view controller to actually set up your own binding context so if you want to create your own um, NVVM framework or you want to use an existing one um, you know this is a way you can go um, as I say, there's already an earlier recording on Android. Um, this cork has just clocked to 17 minutes, and that included a couple of interruptions. You can be up and running really quickly doing your own code. Um, the key to it is to add this bindable, add a little bit of boilerplate code to your view that you need to bind within, um, and then you know you're up and running, and you can use binding like this. That's it for now. Um, I hope that's useful. And uh, that is the end of n equals 39. So. Uh, yeah, it's a nice short one.